Okay, so we're going to talk about mutations. Uh, you've touched on mutations a few times before, but what specifically do you need to know, um, and how could they trip you up in questions? So to start off with, what is a mutation? A mutation is a change in one or more bases uh, within DNA. So it's important that you state it's within DNA, and it could result in a different protein being produced. It doesn't have to. Um, there are exceptions, but it could code for a different protein being produced after protein synthesis. Here are the six mutations you need to know for A level. The first one is a substitution mutation. It's an example of a point mutation. It only affects one nucleotide uh, within the gene, so one position within the gene. It's not a frame shift, which we'll see in a minute. So substitution where one base is replaced with another. So one nucleotide base is replaced with another. I know we've not got the ATCG, the normal adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymosine, uh, thymine bases, um, but the, the message and how it could change make, gets the point across a bit more. So in the original DNA sequence we've got fat, cat, sat, that, mat, but the new message we've changed cat to rat, we've substituted C with R. As a reminder, I know R is not a normal uh, DNA base. That would mean that this amino acid after protein synthesis could be different. So they could have a different, uh, because it goes for a different triplet, you could have a different primary structure within the protein. A different amino acid could be brought in at that position in the protein. It doesn't have to be the case though, because the DNA code is degenerate, i.e. most amino acids have more than one triplet that can code for that amino acid. Sometimes you can have a substitution mutation in this example here, the third base A has been replaced with T. It's the, both of them code for proline. And it could be that A could have been replaced with a C or G. And it would still have coded for proline. So the same amino acid would be coded for. So the same primary structure after protein synthesis would be produced. The same order of amino acids. The hydrogen ion the disulfide bonds would form in the same places. You'd have the same specific tertiary structure. The protein would have the same function. You'll often notice it's the third base uh, that can change and still code for the same amino acid. Um, it can be known as the wobble base, an inbuilt protection against mutation. The next type is deletion mutations. Now, this is a frame shift mutation. I don't know why the bottom of the, the slide's been removed, never mind. But it's a frame shift mutation. So that in this case, a deletion, one or more nucleotides are removed from the sequence. So in this situation here, we've removed the C. So it's completely, after the mutation, all the triplets downstream have been changed. So after protein synthesis, all the amino acids after the mutation could be different. So you end up with a very different primary structure, a very different order of amino acids. So bonds would form in very different places, your hydrogen ionic and disulfide. So you end up with a very different tertiary structure a very different functioning protein. And it's similar for addition. In addition, you're just inserting one nucleotide base into the sequence. In this case, we've added R. And you can see after the mutation, downstream of that mutation, the sequence has completely, the triplet code has completely changed. So all the triplets have changed downstream of the mutation. And same for deletion, you end up with a very different tertiary structure produced in the protein after protein synthesis. Inversion is where a sequence of nucleotide bases are sort of swapped around in sequence, inverted. And here we've got cat has been flipped around to TAC. So again, it's only going to affect the same number of amino acids. If it's a small inversion like this, it'd be one amino acid. Um, but it's not going to be a frame shift. Here we've got duplication. So we've got CAT has been duplicated twice more. So the base, where the base sequence has been repeated uh, more, than, more than once. This would be a frame shift because every triplet downstream will then be different. There's one more type of mutation which is translocation. Um, I accidentally left a slide out for that. That's where sections of DNA break off one chromosome and are added to another chromosome. It can cause large changes in phenotype. It's almost having a deletion, like having a deletion on one chromosome and an addition on another. 
so an awful lot of triplets will be affected or changed. So that was translocation. So what causes mutation? Well, it naturally occurs during the during DNA replication um, in interphase, so the S phase of interphase, um, and it's and and it occurs naturally. It goes a natural mutation rate. But there are things that can drastically increase the rate of mutation. So the key word you need to know is mutagens. So mutagens are something which alter the DNA uh, sequence. And examples of mutagenic agents over here. They shouldn't be a surprise. So carcinogens are examples of mutagens. So sometimes they can try and trip you up with questions. So we're just going to go through three ex examples of what could happen if you have a point mutation. So it's just affecting one triplet and one amino acid. How could it affect the protein produced? So because of the degenerate code, which we talked about um, after the substitution slide, it could cause no change in amino acid. So that's one option. So if there's no change in amino acid, the hydrogen, ionic and disulfide bonds will form in the same place. So you have the same, in this case, because it's a, uh, an enzyme, the same shape tactic site. So the substrate would still fit, still bind, still complementary shapes. So if a substitution occurs in DNA, and after protein synthesis, you end up with a, the wrong amino acid being inserted in the primary structure of a protein. And let's say that the amino acid that's changed was in the active site and it was crucial in forming an ionic bond which held that active site in place. So it's complementary to the substrate. If the amino acid changes, that ionic bond will break, the tertiary structure will be different, and the active site will no longer be complementary to the substrate. For example, here what is what the active site might look like if that ionic bond were to break. So no more enzyme substrate complexes can form. Sometimes you will have a change in amino acid, but the protein's function is still the same. For example, we, here was our key ionic bond needing to form in this active site to keep its shape in place. But let's say that the, we've had a substitution mutation. An amino acid has changed as a result of that after protein synthesis. But that amino acid that's changed in the primary structure is here not in the active site. This key ionic bond can still form, and so the active site remains the same shape. Still complementary shape to the substrate, they can still bind and form enzyme substrate complexes. You could consider an antibody as well. If we've had a substitution mutation in DNA, and after protein synthesis has occurred, the antigen binding sites are the same shape. This could happen if the mutation resulted in a change in amino acid maybe here within the constant region. That's not affecting the shape of the variable region. So that protein, in this case an antibody, could still have the same function. So if a DNA mutation changes an amino acid in the primary structure, or results in that after protein synthesis, if it's not, if the amino acid changed isn't in the key part of the protein, for example, the active site, or the variable region of an antibody, then it might not affect the function of the protein. The protein might still be able to function in the same way. There is another question that's been asked before that's tripped people up. Amino acids R groups could be positively charged, neutral, or negatively charged. In this case here, the R group could be positively charged in an amino acid, the other side of the active site, the amino acids R group could be negatively charged, allowing an ionic bond to form and hold that active site in place. If we had a mutation in DNA, which after protein synthesis did change this amino acid, but it changed one negatively charged amino acid to another negatively charged amino acid, it might still allow this ionic bond here to form, keeping the active site the same shape, allowing it to still be complementary, and bind to the substrate to form enzyme substrate complexes.
So sometimes you do need to think through the question carefully and use logic as well to answer the question. There's another type of mutation, it's a chromosome mutations. This doesn't happen during DNA replication and it isn't a change in the base sequence, nucleotide base sequence in DNA. So chromosome mutations occur during meiosis. The process is known as non-disjunction and it ends up with the gametes having the wrong number of chromosomes. So when the chromosomes split, it could result in one extra copy moving to one pole. In this case, we've got three copies of chromosome 21 and that would result in somebody having Down syndrome. Or you could end up with only one copy of a chromosome in one of the gametes produced instead of the, the homologous pair. Most chromosome mutations are fatal and the fetus would be aborted during development. There are a few exceptions. Down syndrome with three copies of chromosome 21 is one of those exceptions.